My name is Philip Pinnell and I am the president of the Congress Heights Community Association and our project is Old Congress Heights, a far southeast community. And I'm Joy Kennard. I was the humanities scholar on the project uh, with Congress Heights. There's been a continuing misconception uh, throughout the city that everything east of the Anacostia River is Anacostia or Southeast. It's as if we don't have identifiable neighborhoods. And this project is so important uh, in that uh, it, it gave the, uh, us the opportunity to let the residents of uh, Congress Heights know about our rich history. And Congress Heights has um, such a, a unique history. It's just mind-blowing at how much cultural history, how much um, diverse history is in that community. My name is Graylin Pressbury and I'm the president of the Fairlawn Citizens Association uh, in Anacostia. Um, I'm the project director for uh, our project which is called Fairlawn from the Flats to the Heights, and it's a history project. Our project involved both uh, library and, and um, uh, private collection research, uh, which was largely done uh, by my daughter, Camille Pressbury, um, and also interviews. I interviewed um, altogether 14 people in the 11 sessions. Uh, and these were people who both live in the neighborhood currently as well as people who lived in the neighborhood uh, back in the uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s. I'm hoping that this project will perhaps incite others to do further research, uh, perhaps in their own uh, communities or even in the um, Anacostia community itself. There's so much that could be investigated um, through these types of grants. And um, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I'm glad the project is wrapping up uh, <laughs> also. But um, who knows, maybe uh, Fairline will investigate further and look at some of the, um, uh, uh, go into more detail on some particular aspects of our community. Uh, in a future project. My name is Faye Armstrong and I'm president of Historic Mount Pleasant. And uh, uh, we've been interested uh, as a neighborhood uh, for some time in the, uh, the overall history of the neighborhood and particularly the architectural history. We became interested uh, about two years ago in, uh, in looking at these issues and we uh, have some projects with the Business Association and some of the other on Main Street to work on uh, issues today. But uh, when it came to qu answering questions about how the, the, the street came to be the way it is, we didn't have the information. And we looked at our application for Stork District from uh, the early mid-1980s, and it was uh, surprising to see that there was, uh, there was only uh, a paragraph, maybe about a half a page long, about the commercial uh, corridor as such. There was some uh, information about the apartment buildings. But, but really, we had not done the research. Very quickly, uh, we found that uh, <laughs> the history was very much more interesting than what we really didn't know what we were going to find. But we found that uh, Mount Pleasant, uh, after the turn of the last century, became a boom town in uh, 1903 when the streetcars arrived at Park Road and Mount Pleasant Street. And it was the most important developers and the most Im important uh, uh, architects in the city who designed uh, many of those buildings. My name is Carrie Thornhill, and I am the project director for the Hillcrest Community Civic Association Oral History Project. Um, and uh, we are just delighted that it was supported by uh, the Humanities Council uh, and others. And um, let me tell you a little bit about our project. In 2009, 
the Hillcrest Community Civic Association celebrated its 20th anniversary as a civic association in the District of Columbia. Um, we are uh, a community that's located in far southeast uh, Washington um, and uh, we are very proud of our community and the accomplishments of our uh, community as a whole and as our civic association in particular. And as a part of that anniversary where we attempted to pull together uh, a good bit of the history of our uh, association and the key leadership over uh, the last 20 years, uh, we wanted to enrich that history uh, with a um, oral history project that would allow us to uh, talk with some of the elders, if you will, in our community. Um, uh, many of us are aging uh, uh, and we wanted to make sure that we captured uh, as much as we could uh, uh, from their perspectives um, um, before our time is gone. Um, our scholar feels that um, she had an incredible uh, experience over the uh, few months that she conducted these interviews. And I should point out that our deliverables included an, a narrative report, included the naming of those persons who participated in the interviews as neighborhood griots. So they now are, if you will, the official uh, historians and uh, storytellers uh, of our community, uh, of our community's history. I'm Patricia Hallman, the project manager for the Capital View Civic Association History Project. The purpose of the project was to document the history of Capital View since its inception in the mid-twenties through the sixties. Okay. Riddick. Uh, my name is Riddick Van. I'm one of the volunteers for the project. I was I moved to Capitol View in 1936. My responsibility is, was to try to define what area was Capitol View in the early days. So I photographed what I thought were the early houses of Capitol View. Along, and uh, my brother, Ronald Van, helped do this. My name is Doris T. McCannon, and my job was, I'm on the history committee, and I was to deal with the churches. I had not been in Captive View for 20 years, so I'm not a long time resident over there, but I dealt with the churches, and the reason why I was dealing with the church, because I am a member of St. Luke's Catholic Church. And St. Luke's was not an old church, it was a fairly new church too. And I, my job was to provide and see how long the church had been there and who the land belonged to. And that's what I did. Uh, my name is Gerald W. Johnson and uh, Betty Thomas uh, Briscoe and I worked together on the schools. and. Uh, what schools were actually in the boundaries of uh, Capitol View. And Mr. Johnson was born in Capitol View. Um, Mr. Van and I both moved there at a very early age in elementary school. Uh, we feel we're the elderly people there, and so we had a lot of fond memories. And we saw the, of the growth of the community from the, the early 30s in the beginning, um, which was very enlightening. I'm not one of the elderly members, but <laughs> but uh, I guess I am. And um, it was a very safe community. I was born there uh, safe. We slept out on the porches at night. It was a community that was separated from the rest of the city. And we had a great time, great friends.
we must understand that the founding of the, the Berry Farm community was consistent with the realization that there was a pressing need for decent, livable space for black people. The first black community established in D.C. Uh, after the Civil War. It's the first place in the district where blacks could own property. So we used to own all these, this land and build our houses on it. The community that we're talking about uh, starts at Morris Road to our north and ends at St. Elizabeth Wall to our south and then from Anacostia River to the west and going eastward towards Alabama Avenue. From us, to our culture from us, to our religion from us took everything from us and instilled their religion into us. Their culture attracted into us. Their values into us. And, and what street business is really trying to do is we're really trying to go in their grassroots and try and rebuild everything that was taken from us over these past three, four hundred years.